Dark clouds in the distance as the Group S cars make their way across Mount Panorama on their formation lap for race number one, their first race of the weekend here at the Repco Bathurst 12 hour for 2024. And a massive field, 36 cars went through qualifying. Matt Nolte and past his audition this morning, Alex Webster from Porsche Cars Australia. Welcome back to you. What a field of cars. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Good to be back in the chair. I didn't know if I was going to get another Guernsey, so uh, <laughs> I've, I've got my oil plates off now, I guess you can call it that. Uh, yeah, look, great bunch of cars here within Group S. Uh, everything, we've, we've mixed it up a little bit, though. We've reversed the top ten from qualifying, so let's see if uh, everyone behaves and we can get through the first couple of corners, but that rain looks ominous. Terry Lawler, who was quick in qualifying earlier today, will start from ten, and in fact, that that 10th position changed twice after the chequered flag during qualifying earlier today. It did, yeah. Ross Jackson was actually in 10th. And then uh, Tom Wallstab in the 928, who's starting off third, uh, he put in a, a cracker of the last lap. Finally got a clean lap, as he told me afterwards, and uh, put it into eighth. So he starts on third. But Andrew Whiteside on pole in the 911, followed by uh, Michael McElligot in the Datsun 280. So down the field, Jeff Morgan and Terry Law, they were the first and second from earlier today, so expect them to charge with a big gap between the first and tenth cars. Ross Jackson, James Calvert Jones starts at a 13, Graham Golson out of 15, back to Doug Selwood starting with Hugh Harrison in tenth row. Yeah, and as we work back, we've got a couple more Alphas, Datsuns, a great mix. You've got a Porsche 928 there in Timmy Linus, another Alpha of Matt McGrath, Richard Easton, a 911, Richard Rose in an MGB. It all keeps going. And then the final one that comes up the back of the field is a Ferrari. So uh, Philip Powell and his 308. In the low three minutes laps there before. So lap traffic should play a part here pretty quickly in this race, a timed race, not a lap distance. Yeah, correct. So, look, we'll probably see somewhere around about eight laps, maybe a couple of more. It really depends on uh, how quickly they get formed up here and because uh, that is eating into their, their time. They make their way down towards the starting grid right now. First of three races for the weekend and they're looking down this straight and it's the massive black clouds that have formed in the last hour. It's meant to be cruising around us, but you just never know at this place. We started with wet conditions earlier this morning. There it is. If you're watching the stream at home or across the world, fans of the track here, which there's quite a good crowd here for a Friday. It's nice to see out in the paddock. The paddock was very busy. It was, and even up into the supporters paddock or the support categories, we've been seeing lots of people, lots of school kids out there. We've been giving away lots of stickers and uh, great to see the enthusiasm for the weekend strapped themselves in for three big days of course another practice session to come up later today for the big 12 hour qualifying tomorrow and of course the big one from 5 45 local time here on sunday morning the bathurst 12 hour final few cars locking into position for race number one here a mixture of porsches we got shelby mustangs mgs alfa romeos datsuns think of it it's in this field pretty much <laughs> Back of the field we go, waiting for the green flag to wave. Solid fields across our two support categories. Combined sedans will be out after this with 42 cars that went through qualifying earlier today. Waiting for the green flag to wave and watch the front row and watch the fifth row. Race one, Drew Bess is underway. All right, and look, David Canine up on the grass on the left-hand side there. He's managed to get past Michael McElligot. Now, Andrew Whiteside is going to get squeezed out, so he is second going into turn one. Look for the green 911 of Jeff Morgan and also the Shelby of Terry Lawler. They'll start to catch up going up Mountain Straight. The field outside that 10, just told to behave and watch the cars around them. There's a big disparity in speeds and lap times. It looks like everybody's made it through some three wide action. Oh, and the nice and close there with Sweet. Peter Boylan. And Graham Golson got a little bit too close for comfort there, but you can sort of see that the bunch of, of uh, front cars have sort of gapped the rest, and we'll see how it goes going up uh, Mountain Straight, up through here, up towards the cutting. Tom Ballstab on the inside of Andy Purvis, and then the V8 will start to get cranking up the hill, but then watch over the top. The little alpha of Spencer Rice, watch out for him. He's just been passed by Jeff Morgan, but watch out for him over the top. He'll start to catch up again. A graphic illustration then of how narrow Mountain Straight is. It looks wider on the TV. You put two or three wide, that shows you how narrow this course is. And I can tell you, sitting in the car, it feels even smaller, Matt. <laughs> it's, uh, it really does feel like it's coming in on you when you've got more than one car that you have to navigate through. David Kaneen out front at the moment. I think that's the first time that David would have actually led a race outright. And he's leading at Bathurst. How cool is that? Jeff Morgan's already up into sixth position from the fifth row of the grid. Terry Lawler has only made up the one spot as the rest of the field make their way across the top of Mount Panorama. And it's an eerie sight, isn't it? As they 
burst through Brock Skyline and down the hill here for the first time. A long way to play out with just over 20 minutes of racing as the field make their way down into the Retco Dipper. You can see Doug Barber there in the 911, 911. He was up all night thinking of his race number, that's right. Um, here he is coming into Forest Elbow. Oh, and we've got a turn. Tony Kay has been turned around. He's just been tagged. That's unfortunate. Hopefully he can get out of there and back on track. Crease to the front right of that car, so contact with A, another competitor on the wall which on the we, way down. Which we really don't like to see, so that's unfortunate. It's a difficult part of the circuit coming up over Skyline, and uh, that's unfortunate that's happened. Here comes Doug Barber in the 911 Porsche side by side. Down Conrad Straight is a sea of Porsches in this mix. They make their way down into the chase from the Pirelli Speed Camp. Listen to that sound. 20k's an hour through there still. <laughs> yeah, look, it's amazing what some of these cars will do, especially uh, watch for uh, Terry Lawler and his Shelby. When he really gets to open the taps when he's got a clear track in front of him, you'll see some, some pretty reasonable numbers for a car that was built in 1966. Wayne Potts in the middle of that shot there too, the Datsun 280Z that was in the dramas earlier today during the first qualifying session. Parks it down the middle here from this new camera angle into the final turn to complete lap number one of Group S as part of the Repco Bathurst 12-hour weekend. And you can see Whiteside, who started actually in second, uh, sorry, on pole, I'm sorry, is still holding on to uh, second place in front of Barber just there. So he's doing a great job to hang on there. But you'll see Jeff Morgan, lights ablaze. He's going to be charging up Mountain straight to catch. And the guy who started on second, which is the Orange Datsun, he's down into six. Lawler's going to get him for sure going up Mountain straight. So Whiteside, who's ran a brand new engine for this weekend, should have an extra few legs around this Mount Panorama course. He's losing in position here as they make their way up into Griffins. That's the 41 of Morgan now charging through the field from the fifth row. But our leader has pulled away to nearly four and a half seconds. He has. Maybe he was sandbagging and qualifying. Who knows? Maybe he was really trying to manage that result to, uh, to be up further. But uh, you've got the three Porsches there together. Doug Barber, Jeff Morgan, as well as... Um, Andrew Whiteside. Um, the difference between those cars, they all look the same, but actually the car of Jeff Morgan's is a 2.7 litre versus 3 litres across the rest. And anyway, for those that uh, are Porsche files, I'll know that that's actually the same engine and gearbox out of the famous 73 RS. So it's a mechanical fuel injected engine compared to KJEC in the other 3 litres. Morgan, who was a regular in the Australian Porsche Cup back in the 90s, Still loving his time now, some 25, 30 years later. He makes up another position now, heading down the hill through the S's and into the Repco Dipper. So now he has clear track and the fastest on the circuit now as he goes after Kaneen. This gap continues to extend out to nearly five seconds. Now watch for Terry Lawler. He's stuck at the moment. He's just about to take Wayne Potts in the 280Z. But then coming down Conrod, he will certainly start to make some time up. In fact, he's just gone past Wayne Potts. He's one and a half seconds behind that of Whiteside, but uh, he'll start to close in now, heading towards uh, the front of the field. Back a little bit further, Andy Purvis has got back to seventh. McElligot has started in seconds now, back to eighth. Calvin Jones is ninth. Spencer Rice in the Alpha, back to tenth. And Tom Wallstadt, who is third, is back to eleventh. With Joe Felicia, who started out of fourteenth, is now up to twelfth. Showed the speed or potential of that car early today, qualifying, did he? No, look, Joe said he was a bit nervous this morning going out. It had been uh, three or four years since he was back, and he was a bit of a moving uh, chicane, I think, uh, over the top for a few of the guys. But, uh, of course, down the straight, that thing has got a huge amount of mumbo. And uh, with the side pipe, when you do go past it, it's almost like it pushes you off the track. <laughs> Tom Wallstab making the move here in the number three 928 Porsche, the late 70s edition, and he might lose this spot. It's a classic move down here. If you go too far in, it allows the overlap coming up pit straight, and he's going to lose that position. So this battle continues, which it's done since the top of the mountain. He holds on, nicely Tom, done. Yeah, Tommy's known for being sideways. Uh, his nickname is Sideways. He's doing all right, but Spencer Rice in that two-litre Alpha GDV, it's certainly going really well, even up compared to the four-and-a-half litre of the 928. Terry Lawler, the quickest on the track now, with a 240.1. Replay at the start. Yeah, replay at the start. You can see the cars going everywhere, especially the 911s that get a great start with their engine hanging over the rear wheels. And then you can see Andy Purvis got uh, maybe missed a gear because he fell back the, one, the yellow car with the lights on and uh, Ross Jackson in the, in the Pantera managed to get up alongside. And the 
this is what happened to Tony Karafalowski. So the 55 was cruising away from that scene. There's debris coming down the track. Yeah, you can see the Alpha badge actually, uh, the grill bouncing down the road there. But it looks like two Alphas have come together. Doug Selwood, I think that was, and, and Tony Kay coming together, which is a shame. We don't like to see that. I mean, Jeff put a great move here coming into Skyline. I think Doug was very generous, gave him a bit of room, knowing he's actually faster, and uh, let him get past and clear off and, and maybe get a toe. Well done. Meantime, that's been going on. Terry Lawler has gone up into second position. So we head down into the Depper. And there he is from 10th on the grid and flying once again the fastest first sector of the race. Gap is down to one and a half seconds as conditions continue to darken here at Mount Panorama on Friday afternoon. And a long way to play out, some 14 minutes and 45 seconds of racing. This is race one of Group S. Now you'll see is David Kinneen, he's in the uh, the 911 at the front with the Martini stripes. Now just watch for the horsepower of, uh, of the Shelby. It is absolutely motoring, probably hitting close to 7,500 RPM and screaming. Just listen to this coming through the chase. And to the lead. Yeah, just a lazy 45 pay now. Speed difference between the two there on Conrad Strait. So Lola, who was great in qualifying and practice earlier today, Goes to the front. Now, the twist with this is we reverse the top ten once again for race number two. Hey, we've got to spice it up a bit. If the <laughs> weather's not playing, we've got to spice the grid up. Hey? So, that's right. From qualifying, we swap the top ten. And the finishing result from race one will do exactly the same. We'll swap that again for race two. But for race three, for tomorrow afternoon, we'll be back to what they were in qualifying. So, Terry will be back on pole. Three to one. Another lap here, clean affair so far, except for the Tony Karafalowski incident. He's gone back into the pits and has been for the better part of five minutes. Here's Wayne Potts. We parked the car earlier today during practice. He runs back in fifth position. Purvis is next at one side. McKelligan in eighth. Calvert Jones in ninth. And Tom That's Watts in ten. There we go. Moment there. Putting, a, putting a little bit of a wheel on the dirt on the exit of turn one there. And uh, anyway, you'll need all of that because, as you'll see, Spencer Rice in the Alpha, he is super quick over the top, so Tom's going to have his mirrors full of an Alpha, that's for sure. A mistake at the hell corner, you get punished all the way up Mountain Straight. You need 100%. all the speed and the exit out of that turn to get up to Griffins here as they start another lap. You can see Joe Collegia just sneaking up behind in the red call bed. Not hard to miss with the big gaping hole in the bonnet, but uh, he's got 427 cubic inches, which is great on the three straights, but... It's a bit of a handful going up over the top, so uh, you'll see that he'll fall back a little bit in this section and make it back up by the time we get to Hell Corner again. I guess now with Lawler to the front, he's two and a half seconds up the road already. His lap time today qualifying was 232.8. Everybody else around him was 235 or slower. So it's going to be who finishes second and third. Exactly. And look, this is going to be a great battle here between Wolfstad and Spencer Rice because whoever finishes 10th is going to be on pole for the next race. So if you miss out, you're actually going to be starting 11th. So there's a massive uh, amount to be gained between just those two guys in those two positions fighting for it. So look out for that one. they got a bit of a margin back to Kalija at the moment, some five seconds. Jackson, Baker and Harrison back to 15th position. Yeah, you've got the three uh, um, V8s there. Joe Kalija, Ross Jackson in the, in the Di Tommaso. David Baker in the open top uh, Corvette, followed by Hugh Harrison in his Alpha, Warren Hotz in his uh, little Sprite, and Graham Golson in his Alpha 105, Richard East in his Porsche 911, and then Tim Linus in 19th in his 928, followed by Darren Harris in his Alpha uh, GDB as well. Well, we're talking about the guys at the front here. There's class racing going right through this, so you might be 20 seconds off the lead guys, but you're racing with the cars inside your class. Exactly. So, as we call it, there's SA, SB, and SC. And the SC cars are those cars that are the later models. So, the cars you're seeing on screen at the moment, the, 9, the 911 3 litre, and also the Datsun, they're in SC. Ironically, Terry Lawler, who's in a 66 car and is an SB car, well, he's leading. So it just doesn't mean because you've got a later model car, you're up the front. It's actually all about performance and how you drive them. So great driving by Terry, and he's really just putting on a show, which is great. And he still hasn't really dropped Jeff Morgan, who's only three seconds behind. So with these two trading positions, lap after lap purpose, in the Porsche and the Datsun behind of Wayne Potts. Here comes Wallstab down the inside, or not, into the left-hander here. Tom was a big compromise there coming in, so uh, Spencer's going to get a bit of a run here. 
They're chasing James Calvert-Jones in the number 40 silver 911, and uh, this will get tight coming up to uh, up, up into turn two. That's for sure. This has got that straight line performance, does he? Straight across the top. And you can see Spencer's even just pulled just a little bit of a gap. So uh, Tom's pretty good under brake, so uh, he'll be working that brake pedal, that's for sure. And there you can see, even at the 9 to 8, Porsches, as we know, they've got pretty good brakes. Up the hill we go. Just over 10 minutes of racing going. The gap stayed at two seconds between Lawler and Jeff Morgan now, who's moved up ahead of... Barber and Kaneen, who's back in a fourth position. Then this battle for fifth and sixth as they climb up through the shelf on another lap here at Mount Panorama. Yeah, now you can see coming over the top, this is where Spencer Rice in the Alfa Romeo, he'll start to really start to pepper the back of the 928, flowing the car beautifully up through Reed Park into McPhillamy. Cars just look fantastic. Everyone's pretty well settled through there, not to, not to anything crazy. You certainly don't want to be leaving the track there, and you can start to see a couple of spots of rain on the camera there. Just a couple there from that mountain shot. That's where it's going to come from, over the top of Mount Panorama. At the moment, so far, so good. A few more drops there on the camera going into the Repco Depot. So Michael McElligot in uh, the orange, well, the orange, orange uh, Datsa there. He's, uh, he's slowing a little bit. James Calvert-Jones thinking about putting a move up the inside. In fact, he'll get that done. Now, Tom's going to get a bit of a... Oh, that was close coming out of uh, Forest Elbow. And now the 928 should stretch its legs a little bit. If you're looking at some of the top speeds, the Shelby by far and away, the quickest car, doing 252 kilometres an hour, followed by Jeff Morgan doing 242 in the 911. He's put some longer gearing in that car. Doug Barber at 234 kilometres an hour. And even Wayne Potts in the Datsun, who's currently in sixth place, 236 kilometres an hour. They're moving. Absolutely. Whatever that issue was, it seemed to clear itself. He was slowing coming down the mountain, pinches the brake, and the 40 goes up a spot there of James Calvert Jones. Yeah, he got compromised a little bit there, McElligot, uh, coming out of uh, out of that corner. And now Tom's got a little bit of a run in coming down into the last corner, but he's holding the inside line, Michael, and he should still hold it. It's a matter of uh, giving a bit of racing room, which Tom has. But now it's given Spencer the opportunity in the uh, 295 Alpha. He's going to have a bit of a run as well. But that, that's its no slouch in a straight line. You can see it's got plenty of grunt. Definitely. Purvis just seen at the back. Waiting for a mistake to happen. It's the second lock up now. Going into Hell Corner. As we look back through the rest of the field, we're out to well over a minute. So some of the slower cars will be going to lap down soon. Yeah, look, Joe's dropped off the back of there. Then you've got the Pantera of Ross Jackson. Dave Baker in his open top call then. So uh, if it rains much more, it might fill up with water. Who knows? But uh, he, he's got plenty of grunt in a straight line too. But between those three guys, they've uh, been having a close dice, and they generally do at most of the race tracks. You can see in the background the Alpha of Hugh Harrison, followed by Hops in his Sprite, and then Graham Golson in his beautiful uh, 105 Alpha. Just a unique mixture of cars in this Group S category. And it's great to see supporting this year's Repco Bathurst 12 hour. There's a replay here down at Hell Corner, and, well, that was as close to a tank slapper. In fact, I'll give that a tank slapper. Well, what did I say about Tom being called sideways? Well, he's lived up name. to his name. That's exactly right. <laughs> Great recovery. That could have been concrete in. But he is going to be filthy with that because he's now back in 11th, which means he's maybe going to have to start in 11th, and he might not be on pole for race, race number two. He's two seconds away on our screens, anyway, from that position. As Potts starts to fire up there in the fifth position, he's on for his fastest lap of the race. Yeah, Wayne was unfortunate. We might have seen him if you were watching the coverage earlier. He uh, he stopped at the top of the mountain and he sheepishly came up and said, I ran out of fuel. Ooh, what a race car. Bro. I know. Surely it saves a mechanical issue, a gremlin, a gremlin. As we put it down it. to being, oh, the 308 there is just spinning, uh, unfortunately, of uh, Philip Powell. Hopefully he can get out of there and uh, get going again before the leaders catch him. Any Ferrari in the field, but... In fact, he's just been passed by the leaders and been lapped, and so hence that might have put him off, uh, caught him unawares. Terry Lawler continues to lead this race, but the gap is closing now to less than a second. Back to Morgan. Doug Barber still runs in third position. Yeah, they've dropped... Oh, uh, well, another one spinning there. That's David Orchard in, uh, in the uh, in the Triumph TR3, the second oldest car. In fact, it looks like he might have had come very close there to the oldest car in the field, which is the Austin Healey of Townsend. He's 
right in front of our leaders. And they arrived in the scene just as he was clearing away. They might have been looking in their mirrors and gone a little bit uh, and spooked. That could be exactly what it might be. And if you've got that car looking at Terry, you can see his eyes. He's, uh, that's an ominous uh, thing to have in your mirrors, that's for sure. Open face helmets, how cool are they still? Yeah, I still wear an open face. I enjoy it. It actually gives you a bit more feeling of, uh, you know, seeing what's around. So, uh, yeah, if you can run one, I, I have for many years. So this one happened on the replay down here on his own. Oh, and oh, Austin Healy. Right, so that was just uh, evasive action taken um, there by Townsend just to try and get out of the way of the spinning prime TR3A. Time, across the top. It's busy here. It's Lawler and Morgan. Yeah, Tony Anton in the other Shelby just getting out of the way. So uh, he's uh, being lapped and sounds and looks fantastic, Tony's car, but he's certainly uh, not at the same end as uh, where Terry is, right at the front. It's a little busy sequence of racing we come back to then at the Solomon Park section, around the outside of one of the lap cars, he goes. Yeah, he's just coming around, um, actually just missed which car that was. But you can see now, that's allowed Jeff Morgan to come up just a little bit in this lap traffic. We have an unofficial rule within historic racing that you don't take advantage of lap traffic to try and make up a, a, a position. So those guys are very well versed in that and they won't take advantage to try and throw it up the inside just to uh, try and gain a position when you're trying to lap someone. We want to keep nice, safe racing, but good racing, but uh, let's make it fair as well. Listening to Lawless car on the exit, it sounds like it was fluffy a bit on the exit, the way it come out the corner and allowed Morgan to really close up, so I hope listen to that, particularly on the last cruise. It could just be my ears. Yeah, look, in the speed trap he wasn't down, he was 2.53 versus 2.45 for Jeff, so certainly got plenty of grunt. Maybe he was just a little bit more hesitant going over the top with flat traffic. Just going past Kent Brown there, who had an issue in qualifying. He got the car going, which was great, and he's back out there. Lawler, who was quickest in qualifying. We spun the grid around for race number one here today in Group S. So the rest of the field making their way down through. Oh. Quite a more action ahead here now for car 64 that spun in front of our leaders again. Yeah, look, you've got John Harrison there. It looks like he might have actually dropped something. He's pulled over there to drive his left up against pit wall. And it might be that uh, something's dropped down with fluid. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, very uncharacteristic there. Those guys spinning in that position for sure. David Bajan also brought up that incident too as the leaders made their way up. Mountain straight, 23 seconds back to Doug Barber. Yeah, look, you might have seen the shot just a moment ago, Doug with the lights on, but he was in the distance well behind uh, Jeff. The battle now here is actually, uh, as you can see on screen, you've got Andrew Whiteside uh, with uh, James Calvert-Jones and, and Tom Wallstab. They're fighting over uh, who's going to get into that position 10 because 10 is going to be on pole come the end of this race for the next one. The guys extracted themselves from the cars. Hopefully that means, oh no, Kent's got another issue, which is a real shame. He's starting to rain. You can see on that there, he's actually on pit, um, pit lane, oh, sorry, on the main straight there. He's out of the way, so hoping that uh, that doesn't bring out a safety car with a couple of minutes to go and rain starting to fall. Perhaps uh, this, this still can finish under green. So at least four cars we know of out of this race, including Tony Karafalowski, who was caught up in a lap one, top of the mountain incident. And the Alpha car number 88, should see him back for race number two tomorrow. It'll be a busy day with two races supporting the Repco Bathurst 12 hour. To the fans of the umbrellas up there at the top of the mountain. That's usually a good sign that the weather is around. Yeah, Tammy Hotz here in her little sprite, followed by Rob Burson in his Datsun, being lapped now by Doug Barber. Dougie running third, but he is now a distant 25 seconds behind uh, Jeff Morgan, who's uh, himself six seconds behind uh, now Lawler in the Shelby. Be surprised Barber has fallen back this way. It's 26 seconds. I mean, he was close to the guys ahead in qualifying today. Yeah, look, you can see that any purpose is starting to catch up now. Whether or not the kids are starting to get wet out there, it's not really coming through on the camera, but I think it's pretty slippery up the top there. You can start to see a little bit of shadows and uh, reflection coming off the uh, the tarmac, which means it's a little bit wet up there. Just over a minute remaining, so be the end of this plus one lap. The camera and the TV makes it brighter. It's really dark here. We've gone pit straight out of our commentary box window at Mount Panorama today. Lawler is out to five seconds, so if there was a drama, it's certainly gone away now as he starts to shut this race down from Jeff Morgan. Both those cars that started from the fifth row 
only took him a matter of minutes to get up into first and second. Yeah, look, we always thought with the uh, the speed differential uh, in qualifying, we saw it with Terry. He was about three seconds faster on a clean lap than uh, than Jeff. So it was really only probably a matter of time until he really got out in front again. But he'll be starting 10th again if he can close out here at the end of this race. Good decision by the officials to just have a local yellow for that parked car on the pit wall side of pit straight. It's up the mountain we go once again. And you can hear Terry there on the throttle. He's feathering that throttle. He's not planting it. I think it's a bit slippery out there. And with the car that he's got, which has probably got north of 500 horsepower, uh, he's only got 7-inch rims on that car, or 6-inch rims on that car, running a 205 cross-section. So not a lot of tyre, but certainly a lot of horsepower. So you've got to manage that very carefully. And he's done thousands of laps around here over the years. He has. He has. And look, that car prepared by Tilly's. Um, really just an amazing car and, and really well prepared. We've got to put a shout out to our sponsors this weekend. We've got Exclusive Body Works, My105, Bowden's Own and also VP Racing. Without their support, our category wouldn't be here and uh, yeah, we want to put out a big shout out to them. So thank you. Certainly well supported for this 36 car field. James Calvert-Jones looking good here for pole position for tomorrow. At the moment back in 10th position and has about four seconds to McElligan who fell away from him in the end. So the pressure's off, he just needs to stay on the black stuff and face the right direction for the next lap and a bit. Yeah, so you can see with the lap traffic, it really starts to uh, you know, put a, a bit of a change through the cars. There's some great driving there with uh, Tammy. She's getting right out of the way to make sure that uh, there's plenty of room. There's a big speed differential between some of these cars, as you can see, so the driver's very aware of that, both the faster cars. It's their responsibility to pass safely, and uh, those slower cars, they should just be taking their line, keeping an eye on their mirrors, and uh, everyone should be able to race safely. Very impressed with how the lap cars have been today. Trying to focus on eight, drive around this mountain, which is daunting enough, but watch their mirrors at the same time with cars approaching them at a higher speed. Yeah, Jeff Morgan came up to me after practice, uh, sorry, after qualifying. Here you go, Terry's got the wipers on, so it's raining quite a bit out there. Uh, Jeff Morgan came up to me and he said, I wanted to thank all the uh, slower competitors because uh, they really got out of the way and did a great job in quali. And uh, that's just a, a great uh, you know, aspect of this racing where there's, there's good clean racing, but respect as well. So wipers are blazed now for car number one. The gap comes back to 3.8 seconds, but that would be with a couple of lap cars that Lawler has picked up. He heads past the ridges and down towards the final turn from 10th position on today's grid. But another top 10 reverse race to come tomorrow to spice it up as he comes through to start the last lap. Now, I can't say he's home and hosed here with... The windscreen wipers going on the previous lap. It's not, and we know the 911s are good in the wet. And another guy who's really good in the wet is Jeff Morgan. Now, he's seen the yellow flag there, but I think Jeff might have thought that that was actually the checker that came out. Maybe he's, because uh, he backed off a bit more than I thought there. Or was he passing the car when he thought it was still oh, the yellow flag? The yellow flag was still there. there. Yeah, great call. No, the yellow flag was still out, so um, Jeff had to get out of that, wait for the, to clear the green flag, and now he's back on it. That's experience playing right there for Jeff Morgan, who's been around for a long time in Porsche racing. The green flag was just around the hill corner there, so he read that well. Meantime, Doug Barber might lose his third position because Purvis is right on the back. The two Porsches going at it up Mountain Straight on the final lap of this race. Yeah, this will be down to tyre pressures, I think. These guys have got almost identical cars running the same tyres. A little bit of tyre pressure, if that's come off a little bit with the temperature change. A uh, little bit of a wet track. If you put the car in the wrong spot, it's going to be a little bit slippery. So uh, let's see what happens coming over the top. But if let me tell you, if Doug puts a, even a, a foot wrong, his purpose is going to be all over him to try and grab third, that's for sure. Started from third, continues in third position. And there we go. Doug's got a problem. He's got a problem. He's going to pull over there and try and get out of the way. That's a shame read that instantly and pulls straight to the left and off the racetrack. That's just great thinking. He really did well to get out of there. That's great awareness by Doug. Shame that his car is uh, retired there, but uh, just great awareness to try and get the car out of there. And that's and also good news for McElligan now. Puts him up into 10th position. It does. So Doug's going to be coming from back of field tomorrow, so we better strap a camera into his car because that will be fun. <laughs> oh, for Barber, he'll start from the back of the field, but 
He'll have a busy day in race number two tomorrow. Well, Morgan is right on the back here. He's lurking. He's lurking. And there's not too much a difference in uh, top speed here between these two cars. Yes, the Shelby's got a bit more, but Jeff's got a little bit longer gearing in his 911 for Bathurst, and uh, that allows him to stretch the legs. So uh, he was still getting over about 240 down the straight, 250 off, and here we go. Look at this. Morgan's going to take it. Well, I reckon you might be right. I think there's an issue there for, uh, for Terry in his car. He's got right out of that. Let's hope he can try and roll it over the line. Well, he's got 16 seconds back to purpose, but he's got to get up the hill here through the chase. What did we say? It wasn't home and hosed in the number one Mustang. You called it that. It was faltering a bit a few laps ago, and it's let him down at a key moment. Gives Jeff Morgan the lead with one turn remaining. And the veteran has done this for over three decades. Hasn't picks led up a the lap. win. He hasn't led a lap all race, and he's done it on the last lap. Almost like it was organised, but I can tell you it wasn't. But, uh, yeah, what a great race. Great to see Jeff win. He hasn't been racing too much uh, in Group S over the last few years, so this is only his second or third event back. So great to see him, as we said earlier in the telecast. He's 76 years of age now, I think it is. So uh, what a, a great uh, ambassador for our sport and keeping fit and uh, being able to compete still at the highest level in, a, in our amateur historics. What an upset at the end there. Terry Lawler was home and hosed for that one. Finishes second. Purvis and Potts have crossed the line. And McElligot should hold on for P10 and we'll start from pole for tomorrow's second race in Group S. There you go. So Tom Holstab just uh, acknowledging the marshals there. So it was a big thank you and a big thanks to all the marshals out there, especially as the weather has been warm and now it's turning a bit wet. There's a lot of those guys and girls out there that are spending all day out those flag posts. So uh, big thanks from us for them for being out there. Without them, we wouldn't be racing. Yeah, well said. There's McElligot crossing the line for 10th and pole position. So the Datsun will start from the front row tomorrow. Car 48 that finishes 10. Again, so he started on second for this race. He'll start off pole. And beside him will be James Calvert-Jones in the 911. Tom Wallstab will actually start from third again uh, with uh, finishing in eighth position. And Whiteside will be right next to him. He'll be lobbying for more of these top 10 inversion races now as he makes his way back into the pits. You've got to feel for Terry Lawler, who led that race, had the fastest lap as well, 235-1. But in the end, comes up second in race one of Group S and an upset halfway down Conrod Strait. Jeff Morgan swept past and went on to win by 3.7 seconds. Joe Collegia there just out of the top 10 in 11th, so uh, he'll be itching to try and see if he can get into the top 10 uh, for the second race. But just remember, for race three, we're going back to quality results for race three tomorrow afternoon. So it'll all be switched about once again. So here's the highlights, our top 10 inversion race for Group S. Doug Barber on the grass. No, no, that's David Canine on the grass. That's Canine, sorry. That's right, the other martini car, yeah. just to make confuse <laughs> you there, mate. <laughs> Went to the lead in the initial stages of this race as the field of 36 made their way up. This, this is too close for comfort. But Peter Boylan wouldn't have uh, liked that being that close. In fact, you can see here, which was the unfortunate uh, coming together of the two Alphas. Jeff Morgan putting a good move here on Doug Barber, coming up over Skyline. Lots of racing room given by Doug, so, so great racing there. This was the change for the lead where Terry Lawler went past Kadeen, who led for at least half this race in the triple five. Porsche, the Martini-sponsored car. Morgan yeah. lurking in the background of that shot ultimately would get up into second place. Yeah, great, great racing by David. He, it's not often he's been right at the front and uh, great to see him lead a few laps here. Tom doing what he does best, sideways racing. So uh, anyway, he's our president of Group S Racing, so he's, uh, he's putting on a show, let's say. <laughs> he might get re-elected with a move like that. And this was Barber on the very last lap of the race. But more drama was to come here. Terry Lawler on the exit of Forest Elbow. And we thought, like previous laps, it was faltering out of there. But then halfway down, Comrade, it slowed. And Jeff Morgan went around. Wasn't going to miss that opportunity. And the Lime Green Porsche takes the win. Race number one of Group S here today on Fast Friday. That was cool. Maybe not so for Terry Lawler. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be back out for race number two here tomorrow at Mount Panorama.